Okay, hello everyone. Can I Welcome and thank you for joining us for another evening of Stepping Stones to AAC. We're so glad that you are here and tonight we're going to be exploring transitions. So welcome. Okay, so welcome to our Bitmoji classroom. We are very excited to share core words and modeling strategies strategies with you this evening, all surrounding the topic of transitions. So I am Brittany Tony, and I will be your main host for this evening. So I am on the right hand. I am on the right. Um, and just so you know a little bit more about me, I am a, a Saltillo Assistive Technology Consultant. I cover Southwestern Ohio, all of Indiana and Northern Kentucky. So that's just a little bit about me. Go ahead, Heather. All right, I'm Heather Prenifo. I'm the Bitmoji on the left. Welcome, thank you for joining us this evening. A little bit about me, I'm a speech pathologist and an assistive technology consultant for Saltillo covering Minnesota and Wisconsin. All right, so as I mentioned, Heather will be monitoring the chat window. We also wanted to draw your attention to the bookshelf in our classroom. This is where you can see what topics we've already discussed in our Stepping Stone series. If you've missed any of them, please go back and watch them on our YouTube, Saltillo YouTube channel. That's where you can find the ones that we've already done. You can kind of see what we've done there on the bookshelf. We also have more coming up this fall. We have some about how um, our next topic is about, fall. I can't remember, Heather. It's oh, fall. that's right. Oh, God, all, all the fun things of fall. Yeah, so fall, and then we have one about Halloween and getting social, and then some winter, fun winter activities. So um, definitely be sure that you register for those that are coming up as well. So supporting a child who uses AAC is a journey, and we just wanted to help you navigate that journey. So let's get started. On the screen is one of the handouts in the materials tab, and we've labeled that our organizational tool. And it's the same tool you'll see in all of our Stepping Stones series. We just wanted to give you something that you can use to help plan and think about how you want to model core words. So for tonight, we're going to fill this in together. If you have printed it out or if you've got it up on your computer and want to type on it, um, we'll fill it out together to show you how it goes, and then you can use the blank ones to um, use in your therapy or with your child in the future. And this other handout in the materials tab is um, our reference tool. This just gives you a little description about each of those sections and each of the steps we're going to take tonight as we go through and plan for core words, questions that we'll be modeling comments that we might model, how to find them on your device or on a low-tech board, and then we'll uh, talk about practicing with the words and with the devices or a low-tech board. So again, these are going to be tools that you can take with you and refer back to later. Okay, so let's start with a schedule. Schedules really help us transition. So I know we're talking about transitioning tonight and you're probably wondering why we're also going to be talking about schedules, but schedules really help us transition between preferred and non-preferred activities. I will be using the schedule on the left with the numbers during our examples today, but you could also use any schedule you're your AAC user is accustomed to using, such as a first send schedule, which I have pictured on the right here. We used this one a lot when I was a practicing clinician, the first send schedule, but for the purposes of tonight, I will be using the one on the left. Also, when we think about transitioning between activities, especially from a preferred activity to a non-preferred activity, I always like to put the most 
preferred activity last. This is just a suggestion, but having worked with a lot of kids who have difficulty transitioning, it definitely makes it a little bit easier when they can look forward to something at the end. This can, this can even be used in the car. So if you're driving in the car and they um, are transitioning from inside of the car to out of the car or inside of the car to the store, you can use this as well. So have your child um, make the schedule with you. That's always what, what I do. And then I will show you how I kind of did this using Core Words. The third handout in the materials tab is this low tech board that you can print out and use. It is based off of WordPower 60 Basic. So if your child or your student is using WordPower 60 Basic, it will look very similar to the home page. You'll notice there's a few more locations on here. This is a 96 location board. And so we've added question words, a little bit more of the social phrases um, and the categories at the top. So. You can follow along on this as we practice later in the evening as well and keep it as a tool to use in the future. Yes, and while I am, so I'm going to show you guys a video and during that video you can listen and follow along with this core board as well and listen for those core words, jot them down on the planning sheet. You can get a head start, if you will, um, and then we'll do this together later. I often use those as a, a tool to think about what core words I want to target since they are on that home page. So you can use that as a cheat sheet as you listen to her video. Yes, exactly. Okay, I'm gonna let me know everyone if you cannot hear this for whatever reason. Try to turn it up. All right, let's make our schedule for what we're going to play with today. I know that you like to play with the iPad the most. So we will put that last on our schedule. There we go. All right, what should we play with first? Should we play with this one or this one? Oh, good choice. Let's read the book first. We'll play that one. Okay. Put read on our schedule. Next, we'll do puzzle. Then we'll do iPad. Okay, let's read our book. Edie is ever so helpful. After all that, it's shoes on and off we pop. Should we read some more or are you finished with the book? Okay, we can be finished with the book. All right, let's check our schedule. What after book? We have puzzle. Sorry, no, it just happened. Done with that, I'm gonna take that off. Do puzzle. Mmm, this puzzle is hard. Let's take out some of the pieces. Mmm, where does this piece go? Do you know where that one goes? I think that one goes here. Come on, go here. What about that piece? That piece goes there. Are you finished or do you want more puzzle? More? Okay, let's put that piece in and then we can be finished. Good job. Let's check our schedule. What's next? Good job, it's that one iPad is last. It's your favorite. Let's play with that. Let's play Toka Band. 
I like that song. Let's turn her on. She has a pretty voice. I'm going to turn it down. Let's put more on. And now we're all finished. Okay, I hope that gave you kind of an overview of what a transition might look like with core words. All right, so now what we're going to do is I'm going to need your participation and tell me some core words that you heard me saying during the video. So this, you can, there's a lot of different core words that I was using based on that low tech board. So really there's no wrong answer here. That, this, that, more, finished, what? Yeah, good. First, last. Yeah, first and last. Yep. Like, turn, down. Good, turn, down, yeah, great. Go, here. Wow, you guys are on it. Not every core word I said. <laughs> Good job. I was going to say, okay. you guys are probably catching more of the core words than we've had. So good job. Yes. Maybe that little cheat sheet helped you. Okay. So let's go. And now we're going to talk about open-ended questions. Um, so an open-ended question is a question that cannot be answered with a yes or no response, or a question that cannot be answered with just a word or a phrase that does not continue the conversation. So we really like to use open-ended questions to encourage our AAC users to communicate, use descriptive words, and just really continue the conversation. So we're gonna write down some open-ended questions for each of our target core words. But just to give you a little test, which of these is an open-ended question? Do you like her shoes? Or what do you like her about her shoes? Sorry. Yes, great, you guys are on it. Very nice. So yeah, so if we just said, do you like her shoes? It's yes or no. What do you like about her shoes? Would just she can then describe what she likes about her shoes. The other nice thing about open-ended questions is that there's lots of answers that can come out of it. So you're not looking for a specific answer. They can answer anything about it. So what do you like about it? She liked the stars. Maybe I liked the sparkles or the color. So lots of room for communication. Exactly. So let's. I need some participation again and give me some open ended questions. I just picked three of the core words that um, and just already filled in some of this for us. But give me some open ended questions for the word finish. Or all done. You could use either. And you can have finish in your open ended question or it can be a question that would prompt them to answer the word finish. Either way. I was thinking of the question, when will we finish? Good one. This one's a little bit tricky. I had a hard time with this one. <laughs> what does so, we practice with? Yeah. What do, we do what do we do after we finish? I like that one. Thank you, Donna. Any other ideas? We can move on to who is finished. Ooh, I like that one. What about the word more? 
So what open-ended question could we ask to encourage use of the word more? Who has more? Who wants more? Maybe what should we do next to encourage maybe they say more? That's a good one. Or maybe they say finished. Mm hmm. You can use that one for either. Any other ideas? I think those are good ones. Okay, so what about the word that? And this is a tricky word, but I love using the word that because that can be used for so many things, right? <laughs> uh, you just have to teach your AAC user when they're using the word that to then point to whatever that is. But I think it's such a great word and lots of kids use it. So what open-ended question could we write down to help us prompt our AAC user to use the word that? Or what is that perfect? I often think of which one. How do you like that? Oh, I like that. Yeah, I do. That's a good one. And I think okay. you kind of do you, which one do you want? This one or that one? So that prompts you. Yep. That. Perfect. What should we put on that? Good. Good. Oops, hang on. I think it's 50. Oh, no, it didn't. Okay. All right, so if your child doesn't respond to your open-ended questions, that's okay. We can think of some comments that we can say that either will model an appropriate response to our question or would fit into our activity of looking, um, of doing the puzzle or whatever activity that we're doing. So when you're thinking of modeling phrases and sentences, I, the, the best rule of thumb that I usually give is modeling two to three words more than the AAC user is saying. So that's a good rule of thumb that I often tell families and caregivers when they're first learning how to model for their child. So if you so think of it, to, oh, yep, go, go ahead. If you think of your child using um, just one word or one button on their device at this point, then don't model four or five word sentences yet. That's going to be intimidating and hard for them to uh, model after you. So if we can do two or three words to that one word, add on to what they give you, um, that's a good rule of thumb. Yep, exactly. Okay, so let's write down some comments now that go with each of these words. So give me some comments or the word finish. <clears throat> I finish. Mm -hmm. And I always say, don't worry about grammar at this point either, when you're modeling on your device. You can model saying I'm finished, um, but don't worry about finding that on the device quite yet. Don't finish, ooh, I like that. Yeah. Or I not finish. Mm -hmm. It's important to give them that ability to negate. No, not finish. Yep. Yep. Good. What about for the word more? What comments can we use? Want more? Play more? More play? That was <laughs> more drink? More drink. Yes. Good. Yeah. So. This is, that's an easy one, I think, easier than the other, than the questions. <laughs> All right, what about the word that? That drink. Mm -hmm. That piece. Like that. Funny. That ball. Oh, I like that, one. that funny. That's cute. Well, that's a more describing what they're doing. I like it. Want that? Good. I was thinking of Good. like that. Mm -hmm. That's even better. Stop. Yes, I always, I always teach stop and no and don't. 
to bring the kids. Parents hate me. <laughs> it's a good thing to learn. It is. Okay. So notice that this is our finished organizational tool. So I went ahead and filled in step three. So you'll notice that even though we use the word finish in this example, you could easily use the words all done as well. With Word Power 60 Basic on a device, when you select all, the word done pops up right under it because it's a logical next word. So if your AAC user is used to saying all done versus finish, you could easily substitute that instead. But you'll see with step three here, we, I've just listed a few two and three word models. So then if you would like, you can find these words on your low tech board. I've just circled them so you know where they are. You can do this as well on your low tech board if you're modeling that with your AAC user, just to help you remember where those words are, as well as to help the AAC user know where those words are. And the concept around filling out the form at this stage is to prepare yourself so you're not thinking on the fly when you do want to model these words with your student or your client. So writing that script, thinking ahead, how could I model, you know, two words or three words for this one word uh, just makes it so that you're not having to stress about thinking about what you're going to say during the activity while finding on the device. So try using a script as you get started to keep things simple. And like Brittany said, finding things on the board or on the device before you even get started is another huge plus so that you're not scanning and having to really dig and find where those are. Exactly. Okay, so next I'm gonna show you this video and let's practice modeling so you can see what that, I'm gonna show you what that looks like, but I want you to practice as well on your low tech board. Again, as I'm going through these activities, you can model some of the words on your low tech board and just practice pointing to them. And as I am saying it and modeling on the device. Okay, let's make our schedule with what we are going to play, play, play with today. Okay, mm. we have our puzzle, our book, and our iPad. I know you like to play iPad, so we're going to do that yes. one last. iPad is last. What should we do next? Oh, good choice. Let's read that book. That, that book. We'll read that book. And then we will do that puzzle. That puzzle. Okay. So let's read our book first. Because Edie is ever so helpful. I start the day by helping everyone wake up and get out of bed. Oh, are you finished with the book? Finish. Okay, we can be finished reading finish. that. that one. one. Finished with that one. All right, let's check our schedule. We are finished reading. Puzzle is next. Here are my pieces. Mm. Do you know where these pieces go? Let's try that one first. Let's try that one right there. Mm, what about this one? Where did that piece go? Where did it go? Oh, there, you're right. Now, are you finished or should we do more? Let's do more, more play, play that. that. More play with that. That's where it goes. Good job. Let's check our schedule again and see what's next. Ooh, it's your favorite. It's time for iPad. Let's 
play that, that iPad. iPad. All right, here, I'll get it out. Mm. Look, let's play Toka Band. I like that song. Okay, I'm going to stop it there just for time's sake, but you, I think you have the idea. At least I hope you do. <laughs> so after trying the steps with the video, do you have any questions? How did you feel during practice? What are your next steps? We just kind of wanted to take a few minutes to talk about this and how you felt during the practice during the modeling section and see if you have any questions about it. Oh, it's good to reflect on a new strategy. Yes. Uh, good question. What's the difference between step two and step three on the planning sheet? Uh, step two is getting those questions, those open-ended questions to encourage the communication and the comments pre-planned. Step three is looking at it from the word and phrase level and just expanding it a little bit more. So keeping those questions in mind, but then knowing that if they give you just the one word answer, how can I expand that a little bit um, to make it into a phrase or a sentence? So sometimes those phrases I think can be the same in your comments um, and number three. Yeah. Yeah. Natalia said, I never remove the pictures after an activity is done. Thank you for showing that it makes sense to remove them. Yeah, for some kids, it's, it doesn't really impact them, but for some, it really is helpful, I think. Yes, it was definitely helpful for the kids that, that I worked with and for my own kids at home, too, when we do something like that. So, yes. I hope you got to see a variety of core words. And really, with this activity, you can do so many things and as you saw in the beginning i was only modeling one or two words and then kind of increased it but again just make sure that you go at the pace that your that your aac user is going so i hope that you enjoyed the presentation we can stay on for a few more minutes if you guys have any other questions here is our contact information should you like to get a hold of us there's our email and our phone numbers so again thank you so much for attending we hope that you enjoyed it and that you got some ideas that and that you join us next time for fall fun fun in the fall <laughs>